If we understood everything that was left behind by our ancient ancestors, then there wouldn't be any mysteries. And who wants to live in a world without mysteries? There would be no fun in that. Some of the objects left behind by the people who came before us are truly baffling, and even the world's greatest scientific minds can't explain them. See if you can make sense of them in this video. The Konark Sun Temple in Odisha, India is considered so culturally important to its home country that it appears on banknotes. And yet there's much about this impressive landmark that we don't understand. Historians believe, but don't know for sure, that it was built by order of King Narasimhadava I during the 13th century and dedicated to Surya, the Hindu sun god. Much of the site is ruined today, but the 100-foot-high stone chariot that still exists there is a powerful reminder of how majestic it must once have looked. It's thought that the temple was once twice as tall as the chariot. Nobody knows how the temple was ruined, who by, or why. It's often blamed on repeated invasions by Muslim armies between the 15th and 17th centuries, but there's no direct evidence of that. It may just as easily have fallen victim to the frequent monsoons that batter the nearby shoreline. This stunning building is frequently hailed as one of the great architectural marvels of the Indian subcontinent, but must also count as one of its least well understood. Moving halfway across the world to Scotland in the United Kingdom, we find the Cockno Stone. This is one of the UK's greatest examples of Neolithic art, and yet the original intentions of the artist or artists responsible for the work are unknown. The 40-foot-long stone slab is extensively decorated with ring and cup markings, all of which were made with great deliberation and care, but their meaning is a mystery. The stone was found in 1887 and almost immediately became a tourist attraction, but little care was taken to protect the stone from the many people who wanted to visit it and stand on it for photographs. By 1965, the original markings on the stone had become badly worn by the feet of visitors, so the whole slab had to be buried for the sake of preservation. It's remained buried almost constantly ever since. Aside from the enigmatic rings and cups, the slab is also marked with cross shapes and what appear to be drawings of four toed feet. Perhaps this was nothing more significant than a hopscotch board when it was decorated 4,000 years ago, but it would be nice to know for sure. Human beings have observed many different kinds of burial traditions over the millennia, and archaeologists like to believe that they've seen and understood most of them. Every now and then, though, they come across one that defies explanation. Somewhere between the 17th and 18th century in Poland, a child was buried in the tunnel Wilki Cave with the skull of a chaffinch placed inside its mouth. There is no chance that the skull got in there by accident, so the placement had to be deliberate and, presumably, ritualistic. The nature of that ritual is unknown. Initially, the burial was thought to be far older, perhaps as old as 4,000 years, based on other shallow grave burials within the cave. But radiocarbon dating of the bones confirmed the year of death to be somewhere between 1750 and 1850. A second chaffinch skull was placed next to the child's head. Given the total lack of comparable burials and the absence of any other information, it's possible that this burial meant something personal to the child's family. If that's the case, we'll probably never get to the bottom of the mystery. Just off the coast of New Zealand is a smaller island known as Wakari, also known as White Island. It's a private island, and only those who apply for a special permit are allowed to set foot on it. That might have something to do with the fact that the entire island is actually an active volcano, but might it also have something to do with the strange ruins that hide there? Anyone who's ever seen the science fiction movie or television show Stargate might find something a little familiar about this ruined structure, which looks more than a little like a wrecked portal. The official explanation is that it was built during sulfur mining operations, 
but we're not aware of any sulfur mining procedure that would necessitate any device that looks like this. There's also little in the way of other sulfur mining equipment in the area, although that's apparently down to a volcanic eruption in 1914 that destroyed the factory buildings but left this strange portal standing. The smoky pits that mark the rocky surface of the land make the island feel like an otherworldly place, so maybe that makes it easier to believe the portal-like structure is something ancient and mysterious. Murder mysteries are among the most popular TV drama shows. Everyone loves a good murder mystery because they like to think of themselves as detectives. But could you solve this case? It's the mystery of the Klonikavan man who passed away 2,300 years ago in violent circumstances. The remains of this unfortunate Iron Age man were discovered in a peat bog in County Meath, Ireland in March 2003. The peat bog has done an excellent job of preserving his body, so much so that his skin, hair, and internal organs are still present. Unfortunately, he's missing his lower body, which was probably severed by a peat harvesting machine. From his upper half, scientists have been able to determine that he was around 30 at the time of his death, stood around 5 feet and 2 inches tall, and had crooked teeth. His hairstyle is very distinctive with the sides and top of his head shaven, and then the remainder grown out to several inches long and then folded forward and back again in a mohawk shape. There's evidence that he was tortured before he passed away, including the cutting off of his nipples. That might mean he was a deposed king. Sucking on the nipples of a king was a sign of submission, so cutting off the nipples would theoretically have made him incapable of kingship. That's just a theory, though, and a very strange one at that. There are people living in the town of Rockwall, Texas, USA, who don't know why their hometown is called Rockwall. If you're one of them, allow us to solve the mystery for you. It's because of the enormous ancient wall that runs below the town. Some people even refer to it as the Great Wall of Texas. The wall was first excavated in 1852, and has been a controversial topic ever since. Archaeologist Robert T. Hill personally inspected the wall in 1901 and declared that it was a natural sandstone dike rather than anything built by human hands. Robert never had the luxury of inspecting all the further sections of the wall that have been unearthed since then, though. Wall sedimentation can sometimes lead to rock formations that look like human-made walls, it's doubtful that any such natural formation would run on for this long or have an appearance that's so akin to deliberately placed bricks. There's a growing agreement within the scientific community that the wall didn't form naturally, but the questions of who built it, when, or why remain unanswered. Did the ancient Egyptians understand the basic principles of electric lighting? The answer to that question is almost certainly no, but even if we acknowledge that, we could still use some answers about the Dendera relief. You'll find it below the Temple of Hathor in Dendera. Most people refer to the relief as the Dendera light bulbs, and it's easy to see why. The enormous objects held aloft by the human figures in these carvings really do look like large light bulbs. They have what appear to be filaments in the middle of them, with wire-like shapes coming out of the end of the bulbs. To conspiracy theorists, this is yet another piece of evidence that the Egyptians had access to higher forms of technology, and were even more ahead of their time than we already give them credit for. To Egyptologists, the carvings actually represent serpents being carried on lotus leaves. Logic tells us that the Egyptologists are more likely to be correct than the bulb theory believers, but it's still a little odd that the same arrangements of serpents and lotus leaves don't appear on any other known ancient Egyptian carvings. While we're on the topic of our ancient ancestors probably having access to technologies that ought to have been impossible for their era, let's talk about the so-called Baghdad batteries. These troubling artifacts were found in what's now Baghdad, Iraq, way back in 1838. 
Historians and scientists dismiss the notion that these objects were designed to hold an electrical charge, but the fact remains that they do. Inside each clay jar is an iron rod, and around each iron rod is a wrapping made of copper. The purpose of the rod and the wrapper can't have been ornamental, because they couldn't be seen when the jar was closed. In fact, combining the iron and the copper in this way doesn't make much sense at all, unless you're trying to make a battery. These artifacts have been tested in labs, and their ability to hold a charge has been demonstrated and proven. There is no doubt that someone living in this part of the world made a primitive battery 2,000 years ago. The question is whether they did so deliberately or by accident, and we don't know the answer to that. The question of who the world's first seafaring civilization was will probably never be resolved. However, what we do know is that the history of sea travel isn't as well understood as it probably should be. Take the Piri Reis map, for example. This document, named after the Turkish admiral who drew it in 1513, displays knowledge of the coastline of Antarctica that ought to have been impossible for the 16th century. Antarctica wasn't officially discovered until it was sighted by a Russian exploration team on January 1820, but there's no mistaking its distinctive shape in this map drawn over 300 years earlier. There's no sign or mention of ice on Antarctica in the Piri Reis map, which raises a couple of interesting possibilities. One is that Antarctica wasn't covered in ice back then, which is unlikely. Another is that Piri Reis never saw the Antarctic coast with his own eyes, and drew his map using reference guides taken from elsewhere. Whatever the story behind the map's design is, it's obvious that someone had detailed knowledge of the frozen continent long before history tells us they should have done. It would be very useful to know when earthquakes were coming. Areas could be evacuated ahead of a disaster occurring, and countless lives could be saved. We struggle to predict earthquakes here in the 21st century, even with all the wonderful technology we have at our disposal. And yet, the ancient Chinese were trying to make such predictions during the 2nd century. They used devices like this seismograph, made by Zhang Heng in the year 132. While it might look like an elaborately decorative vase, Zhang Heng's device is incredibly sensitive and sophisticated. When placed on the ground, it can detect tremors occurring miles away, which swing a pendulum inside the artifact. Should the swing go beyond a certain safety level, it dislodges one of the balls inside the mouths of the dragons attached to the seismograph's sides, dropping the ball into the mouth of a frog. This not only tells observers an earthquake is coming, but also gives them an idea of which direction it's coming from. It probably wasn't all that accurate in terms of predicting directions, and it wouldn't have given much notice, but it was certainly better than having no warning at all. There were no human beings living on Earth 300 million years ago. That means there was nobody around to make common household objects like screws. How then can it possibly be the case that this screw was found embedded inside this 300 million year old rock in Kaluga, Russia in the 1990s? The puzzling artifact was found by researchers who arrived in the area after a meteorite strike which only served to add to the air of mystery. Some claim that the presence of the screw is evidence of a lost civilization of humans who lived on Earth prior to our arrival, or perhaps even evidence of time travel or alien visitation. Scientists would prefer you to believe that the screw shape is actually just an ancient fossilized sea creature called a crinoid. Crinoid fossils often do look a little like this, but they tend to be smaller and have different markings. There's no doubt about the age of the rock or the object stuck inside it, but no agreement about the nature of that object. Scientists won't shift from their belief that it's a crinoid. UFO enthusiasts won't shift from their belief that it's a screw. What do you think? 
There's a pumpkin patch in the Ochotillo Wells region of San Diego County, USA. But it's not like any pumpkin patch you'll have encountered before. For a start, it's in the middle of the desert. Secondly, you wouldn't be able to pick any of these pumpkins up and take them home. Most of them weigh more than a ton. These pumpkin-shaped oddities in the desert are made from sandstone. The scientific explanation for them is that their concretions formed through a combination of wind and water, shaping the stone over millions of years to create these distinctive shapes. There's no one single theory on how concretions like this might be formed, but most of them revolve around the idea that they started as just one single tiny object, perhaps a grain of sand or even a dead insect, that attracted other sand particles and grew from there like a snowball. The process happens underground, but the end product is eventually revealed when the surface is weathered away. As there's no universal agreement about the process, though, some people remain convinced that there's another reason for their existence, one that scientists can't explain. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!